Hello and welcome to today's episode of International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Saudi-led coalition attacks civilian infrastructure in Yemen. Striking Saudi African workers say they are facing armed attacks and threats. How is Palestine action able to struggle against Israeli arms manufacturer Elbit? We begin with Yemen. Where the Houthis have alleged that the Saudi Arabia-led coalition forces carried out air strikes on Sada city's Talmus water station late on Tuesday, January 11. The strikes reportedly caused significant damage to the tanks that provide water to over 135,000 civilians in the city. Claiming that the water facility was purely a civilian project, the Houthi government demanded war crime proceedings against the Saudi-led coalition. It also asked international organizations to fulfill their responsibility to Sada residents, the Yemeni news agency Saba reported. According to Saba, the Saudi-led coalition altogether carried out six air strikes in Sada province, causing damages to civilian infrastructure like telecommunication towers. The coalition forces also launched several air strikes in Marib and Hodeida provinces. According to Deputy Minister for Water and Environment in the Houthi administration, Hanen Al Darib, the attack on civilian water tanks has endangered the supply of water to the residents of Sada, who are already suffering due to a severe shortage of fuel. The Saudi-led coalition has been waging a war in Yemen since 2015 to reinstate its former president Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi. The coalition has imposed a strict land, air and sea blockade of Yemen. This has deprived the majority of its population of basic necessities such as food and medicine. Due to the war and the blockade, at least 400,000 Yemenis have died and millions displaced and pushed towards death due to starvation and lack of essential medicines. According to the UN, in the last month alone, at least 350 Yemenis were killed and more than 15,000 people were displaced. Our next story is from South Africa where striking workers of the dairy company Clover allege that they have been subjected to a number of attacks. The workers have been protesting since late November and are led by the General Industries Workers Unions of South Africa (GIWUSA) and the Food and Allied Workers Union (FAWU). According to union officials, the vehicles of at least two workers were attacked with petrol bombs, while others were threatened by groups of thugs or received menacing phone calls. The workers of Clover have been on strike against re-entrenchments and salary cuts instituted by the company, as well as other measures that have increased their workload. Clover is owned by the Milko Consortium, which itself is owned by the Israeli um, Central Bottling Company. When Clover was taken over by Milko in 2019, assurances had been given that any re-entrenchments as part of a restructuring plan would be kept on hold until October 2022. The company also promised to create 500 new jobs. However, unions say that the company has gone back on its promises and has created conditions due to which over 800 jobs have been lost. The company is also considering the loss of over 1400 more jobs according to workers. The unions have been demanding that Clover be nationalized and handed over to workers management. And finally, we had earlier reported that Israeli arms manufacturer Elbit has been forced to shut down its factory in Oldham in United Kingdom. This follows a continuous campaign by the group Palestine Action and its allies since 2020. We bring you this excerpt of an interview with Huda Amori of Palestine Action on the campaign, how it was organized and the way ahead. We are a direct action network we launched um over 18 months ago now in July 2020 and we basically take action against Israel's arms sites here in Britain to disrupt them, blockade them, occupy their sites. um often in most actions there is red paint involved which is uh, covered to, to cover their premises and to signify the blood shed by these companies um and also on many occasions especially at their factories there has been a, um, a high level amount of damage and dismantling done to the machinery um inside the factories and to the infrastructure the the infrastructure of the actual factory themselves um and just in our first year when we launched we caused um albert 15 million pounds in losses by doing these type of actions um and and that was with just over 100 people being being arrested and actually they were shut down for over 105 days which was 3 months out of 1 year so we you know we went into it with a clear mission we wanted to shut this 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 company down we wanted to shut albert down it was as simple as that for us we were sick and tired of begging and appealing to politicians 
who weren't going to act on this issue. You know, we've been waiting and asking for this for so long. But each time something happens in Gaza, or each time something happens in Palestine, there are no sanctions brought by countries like Britain. Instead, they're actually deepening their ties with Israel's apartheid regime. And I think it gets to a point and when you realize that Palestinians in Gaza and Palestinians in the West Bank and in the refugee camps um, cannot, cannot wait. The situation is urgent and we have to act with that same urgency. And you know, when you start to realize that actually these weapons are never built, in front of the people that they will kill. You know, they don't build these weapons in Gaza. They won't be able to because the people would do the same thing we have done and they would just stop the weapons from being produced. But they are built in front of us here in Britain where we do have privilege um, and we do have an ability to actually go out and stop these factories from operating. So for us, it's the most logical uh, thing to do when you know that most people, I think, you know, somebody was going to hurt someone Um, in front of you, most people would step in the way and try and do something about it. And I think it's exactly the same principle. When you know that you have an arms factory which is building these weapons um, and will be used to kill people and has been developed on on killing people, um, then, then we have a duty to actually go out and do whatever it takes. And if lobbying, if they don't respond to to uh, our call out of, of to lobbying um, of MPs and politicians, then we won't, we won't, we will do it ourselves. And I think that's the point is, you know, lives are at stake and humanity is at stake. And uh, I think when you see the inequality of the world, uh, I think for those who are in, are in a privileged position, we do have an obligation to step out of our comfort zone uh, when it comes to campaigning for these issues. Otherwise we're gonna end up in the same situation over and over again. And, you know, I think like myself, many people are tired of of seeing what we saw in May, 2021, when we saw Gaza being bombed once again, um, with weapons again, that are probably built here in Britain. And, And even though there is global support amongst people for Palestine, it's not translated to government legislation. So for us, going out and shutting these factories down and saying we don't need the government legislation to stop Israel from being able to produce these weapons here um, in Britain. And, you know, for for Elbit in Britain, they actually are, so, and you mentioned before about not knowing um, what Oldham is, and I'm sure many people who are listening to this won't, but uh, these factories are normally not in the kind of metropolitan areas. They're actually in working class communities. And for example, Oldham actually has a very large Asian uh, community, very large Kashmiri community, Arabs there as well, um, who are actually you know, weren't aware of this factory existing until the kind of action stepped up against this factory. And you know, it's it's so insulting to see that they put they put the manufacturer of, 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 of these weapons, which we used to kill, um, you know, their, their, their communities back home right in front of them um, and think that they'll be able to get away with it. And obviously they, they, they didn't and they won't. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Yeah,